everyone, and welcome to episode four of Let's Talk. Today, we're going to be discussing color theory. We'll cover the various harmonies like primary colors, complementary colors, and even tetradic and triadic colors. To do this, we'll be using the pocket color wheel. We'll also be utilizing an accompanying worksheet, which I have right here. You can find this on my website and it is free to download. The link for both are in the description below. This one you can get on Amazon and then like I said, this one for the website. And while I have you, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can be notified whenever there are new episodes and when we go live. So grab your worksheet and color wheel. There is also a smaller four by six version of this color wheel available. If you don't want to use the full page while you're coloring, the link for this is also in the description below. Yours will be a blank one. This one I've colored using Mark Art Color Pencil which is also the color pencils that are used on the examples that you'll see today. One of the things about color theory is that you can utilize it well without needing to make it look realistic. For today's examples, I've colored in Johanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder. The idea is to give you examples of practical application of these color combinations. I won't be giving you the exact pencil numbers or names as the idea is that you'll take these color combinations and apply them to your own pictures and pencil brands. The idea is to create a balanced image with contrast and is pleasing to the eye. We'll talk about accent colors and even something called atmospheric haze utilizing warm and cool colors. Before all of that though, the first term we're going to discuss is going to be the most important to this episode. That is hue. Hue is the name of a specific color, for instance, red, blue, green, etc. This is the basis for all of the other terms. Without a hue, you cannot create the various tints and shades and color combinations. Next is value. Value is the light and dark variations of each color. This is a scale of black and white value. There is also an empty black and white block for you to fill in and try your own value variation. Let's go ahead and fill in this one right now. So I have my black mark art and my white. That's really all you're gonna need. So we'll just kind of go heavier on one side. It doesn't have to fill in perfect. And what you're gonna do is you are going to slowly fade this out all the way until you get to what's gonna be the white side. So let's go ahead and keep, keep filling this in. We'll do a second layer here and go a little bit darker. Oh, look at me, I'm coloring out of the lines, but it's okay. It does not have to be perfect. The idea is just to practice from light to dark. Okay, all the way to bright white. Now it'll blend it a little bit, but it won't, obviously won't show up on one end. One of the other ones you can use, which I really like to use, kind of makes it creamy, is a white Prismacolor. So the idea is, this is our darkest, our darkest black here. Let's go ahead and grab a white Prismacolor here. Underneath that, you'll see we have intensity slash saturation. Intensity is another word for the saturation level of a color. The highest level of saturation is when a color is at its most vibrant, or essentially the pure color without tint, shade, or tone. As you can see, the image to my left is incredibly vibrant. There is a wide variety of saturated colors. On the opposite side of this, you can see this image is significantly toned down in comparison to the first image. It has an almost washed out look to it. This is what's called desaturated. You could also say that these are muted tones. Adding to that, the next three terms are tints, tones, and shades. Tint is color plus white. Tone is color plus gray. Shade is color plus black. You can utilize another worksheet I have, which we used last time we did a live color theory. This particular worksheet is full of blank flowers in which you can practice mixing colors and, and creating different shades. For today, we'll do a quick example of adding some white, gray, and black. So we're gonna move this to the side here. And let's just grab a nice, simple blue. This is again, the Mark Art pencils, okay? This color here is a bit of a muted blue, which 
in all situations I would utilize rather than just adding gray on top. But for the sake of this, we're gonna go ahead and use the gray instead of the muted blue colors. Most larger sets of pencils that come with a large number of pencils, whether it's anywhere from 72 to 150, are going to have variation in your, in your different hues so that you can get that kind of muted color without needing to add gray on it. But for the sake of this, we're going to go ahead and use, use our gray. I don't want to press too hard because I want to leave room to add colors on top. And if you burnish the paper by pressing too hard too soon, it gets much more difficult to layer your colors. So this one's going to be the black one. So our lightest color is actually going to be essentially the pure color of the blue. Okay, so that one's going to get a little bit more. And this one's going to have the gray. This one's also going to get a little bit more. And then this one will be for the white. So for the first one, we are going to create our tint using our white. Now I'm gonna use the white Prismacolor because it blends a little bit better, but you'll see how much this actually lightens it. Now I use white a lot in my images, which is why I end up with a lot of like kind of pastel looking, uh, looking colors. All right, then this one is going to be our gray. Now this is not a super dark gray, but it's also not a super light. A lot of larger sets have um, quite, a do, quite a few different uh, variations in uh, gray tones. So it's just a matter of picking the one that you want. All right, so this is our tone. So it's definitely gonna give it a more of a, a muted look. Okay, that is our tone. And lastly, we're gonna use our black, which will create a shade. Now, a lot of times I don't, you know, I, I tend to use complementary colors to shade, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna use black. Now, I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. So a lot of times if you wanna shade, you just do a portion in the darkest color. So we're gonna kind of fade that out. Now, in this case, if you wanted to, you could use a blender. We'll go ahead and grab that now and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is just the Karen Dash blender. Okay, we're gonna start in the darkest area here. Now I already pressed fairly hard with the gray for the tone one, so I'm not actually gonna use a blender on it. But this is what you would call a shade. All right, so there we have, we have tint, tone, and shade. After learning the variations in tint, tone, and shade, you have the tools you need to create a monochromatic page, which uses only one color in the entire page. The image to the left is in monochromatic. This hue we used was teal. Now you, can, you don't always need to use white, gray, or black. You can also get the effect of varying levels of color by changing your pressure or using more or less layers. That colorless blender like we just used can also be useful in smoothing out your paper or helping to add with the variation in your hue. If a person knows any collection of colors on a color wheel, it's usually this one. This one is referred to as the primary colors. Primary colors are your red, yellow, and blue. These colors cannot be made by mixing any other colors. They are the base for all of the other colors. The next category is secondary colors. This includes orange, green, and violet. These colors are created by mixing variations of two primary colors. Tertiary colors are the six colors that are made when mixing one primary color with an adjacent secondary color. These are yellow green, blue green, blue violet, red violet, red orange, and yellow orange. These are all the colors that make up the basic color wheel. There are more color wheels out there that include many other variations, but these are the baselines, primary, secondary, and tertiary. You'll find that maybe a larger, uh, larger color, color wheel will have more of the variations of colors that are in between all of these, or a larger hex chart will have everything else, but this, this is the baseline. You heard me mention earlier about warm and cool colors. The colors from yellow to red violet are considered warm colors. The colors from yellow green to violet are considered cool colors. You'll sometimes hear me say that there is a certain color that is a warm color, then there is a version of that color that is also cool. That has a lot to do with what colors are added into it to create that color. Over time, your eye will get trained to notice these subtle shifts in color. Many times this can be easier to see when they're side by side. 
This also comes into play when you're creating an image that can be referenced to atmospheric haze. Here's an example of what that means. As you can see in this landscape, the colors are cooler while part of the image that is in the foreground is warmer. Cool colors tend to sink into the background while warm colors tend to pop forward. To grab your audience's eye more, having contrast in your picture really helps the color pop. One of the other fun ways to do this is by using an accent color. In this instance, we've used a lot of cool colors except for one orange flower. Your eye is drawn to that flower because it stands out from the rest. The orange contrasts the cool colors of the rest of the image. One of the reasons this works is because of complementary colors. For those of you who watch the channel for a while, know that this is something I mention fairly often. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. In this example, I've used orange and blue. Other examples include red and green or yellow and violet. As you can see, these are the ones that are directly opposite. So obviously you could do yellow, orange and blue, violet or red, orange and blue, green or yellow, green and red, violet. Something similar to this is a term called split complementary, which uses any color with two colors on either side of its complementary color. In this example, I've used red, blue, green, and yellow green. On the back of these color wheels, you have these triangles and shapes, but there's also labels. So you can see here for the image that I just mentioned, there's the red, the blue green, and the yellow green. This one is right here where it says split complementary. So you can turn this in any direction to choose your new combination of split complementary colors. So here we have yellow, orange, blue, and violet. Turn it one more and we've got yellow, red, violet, and blue, violet. Analogous is another fun color harmony to use because it can also be referred to as a rainbow color order. Analogous are colors that are right next to each other using at least two and up to five colors. For this example, I have used orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, and green. The last two terms I want to mention are triadic and tetradic. This is where it can start to get a tad confusing as there are so many combinations that can be used for these. We we'll start with triadic. One of the helpful things to remember for this is a triangle shape. This is where the physical color wheel comes in handy because you can turn it to line up with the colors you need. As you can see, they've labeled the shapes used for the different color combinations. In this instance, the three colors I've used for my triadic example are red, blue, and yellow. You saw this image earlier because I also use this as my primary colors example. Other color, other color combinations for triadic can be yellow, green, blue, violet, red, orange, here, or blue, green, yellow, orange, and red, violet. Just turn and it lines up. For tetradic colors, we switch to different shapes. As you can see on the color wheel, there is a square and a rectangle. With the two different shapes, the key commonalities of them are the four corners. What this signifies is that tetradic is the use of combining two different sets of complementary colors. In this example, I've used the rectangle shape. There we go. <laughs> I've used the rectangle shape in choosing blue and orange and red and green. So we have blue, orange, red, green. Other examples could be green and red. Let's see, with the square. There we go. Green and red, blue, violet, and yellow, orange. As I mentioned before, these 12 colors on the color wheel make up the base sets of colors that you can apply to your future images. However, knowing your color wheel and what goes well together isn't just useful in your colorings, but it's also useful when knowing what color jacket to pair with your favorite shirt or what color curtains would work for the furniture in your living room. Color is all around us and understanding it and how to use it is just the beginning to enjoying more of the coloring world around you. I know sometimes choosing the colors for your image can feel a bit overwhelming and sometimes it's hard to figure out where to start. For me, I do one of two things. I start with the main element of the page, like a horse or a large flower, and build the rest of my image off that. Or you could choose a more limited color palette and challenge yourself to create a monochrome picture or just use the primary colors. Either way, having these color tools at your fingertips and learning to utilize them is getting you one step closer to creating eye-catching imagery. Along with the blank worksheets, I'm also including a page with all of the colored flower images and their color combinations for you to use as a reference if you like. Keep in mind, however, that if you choose to print them out, you may not get the true color of how they were originally created. So be sure to make notes of your favorite color combinations so you can try them out yourself. I hope you found this helpful. 
Don't forget to color in your very own color wheel. If you color a page using any of these tips you learned about today, I'd love to see it. So be sure to tag me in it. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.